Hello everyone, you are watching Blackboard. In today's video, we will go through the basic steps that one has to go through while being in a histopathology laboratory. So basically, a histopathology laboratory is where pathologists and histotechnologists deal with examining the body tissue and diagnosing the disease. Let's begin. In first step, the surgeon excises the tissue piece from the patient body and sends it to the histopathology lab in a closed container suspended in a solution called fixative, which preserves the actual integrity of the tissue. If the tissue or organ is excised from a living person, the procedure is called biopsy. But if the tissue or organ is excised from a deceased person's body, the procedure you call autopsy. Once the specimen is received at the reception of histopathology lab, certain aspects are made sure that the tissue sample being received is from the right patient with the right request form at the right time within the right fixative. After crossing this step, the tissue specimen is sent to the grossing room where examination and dissection means cutting of the tissue piece or organ is performed. Now, examination includes noting the size, shape, color, texture, and any visible abnormalities or lesions present in the specimen. Dissection and sectioning. In this step, the tissue specimen is carefully dissected to obtain a representative sections that can be processed for microscopic analysis. This may involve cutting the tissue piece or organ into smaller pieces or removing specific regions of interest for further study. Right after dissection, the smaller pieces of tissue are placed into the cassettes with the correct orientation and these cassettes are placed into fixatives until the next step which is tissue processing. Keep in mind, the cassette must contain the tissue piece of interest because if it is lost, the whole upcoming procedure is of no use. The next step is tissue processing. Now here, the cassettes containing the tissue pieces are passed through four basic steps. Step one, fixation. In this step, cassettes go through a fixative solution like 10% neutral buffered formalin for proper preservation of the tissue specimens and to avoid autolysis and putrefaction of the tissue. Step two is dehydration. In this step, water content in free form is removed from the tissue specimen by passing them through the concentration gradients of alcohol in an increasing manner. Step three is clearing. In this step, a clearing agent like xylene, which is being miscible in alcohol, is passed, which washes out the alcohol. Step four is impregnation or infiltration. In this step, Paraffin wax infiltrates into the tissue specimens to make them prepared for the upcoming procedures. You know what? All these four steps are performed to make the tissue specimens enable to be cut on the microtome. All these four steps can be performed either manually or in an automated tissue processor and it takes around 18 to 24 hours. The next step is embedding. This step involves fitting the tissue specimens into suitable molds with the help of paraffin wax as an embedding medium. Here, the goal is to provide structural support to the tissue specimens and make them enable to be cut into thin sections that can be mounted on the glass slides for subsequent staining and examination under a microscope. Once the embedding medium is solidified, 
the tissue blocks are trimmed to suitable sizes for sectioning. Next step is microtomy. Here, the thin sections of specimen are cut for microscopic examination. This is performed using specialized instrument called microtome, which allows precise and controlled sectioning of the tissue. In this instrument, the tissue block is securely attached to a holder or chunk which holds it in place. It proceeds with two steps, coarse and fine sectioning. A coarse adjustment mechanism is used to cut thick sections from tissue block. These initial sections are larger than the desired ones and serves as starting point for subsequent fine sectioning. Right after this, Fine sectioning is performed to achieve the desired thickness of the tissue sections. Actually, the thickness can be adjusted based on the requirements of the specific analysis or staining techniques used. As microtome cuts thin sections, they are floated in a water bath and then picked up on glass slide. This step is called flotation. Next step is deparaffinization and it begins with rehydrating the tissue sections. You know, since paraffin wax is hydrophobic, the tissue sections need to be brought back to aqueous state. And this is achieved by immensing the tissue slides in a series of decreasing concentrations of alcohol, typically starting with xylene, followed by decreasing alcohol concentration and this gradually removes paraffin and rehydrates the tissue. Slides after being rehydrated are subjected to various staining techniques such as hematoxylin and eosin staining or some special stains to highlight specific tissue components or cellular structures. The stained sections are then examined under a microscope by a pathologist or a histotechnologist to analyze the tissue morphology, identify abnormalities, and make a diagnosis. Now it's time to like my video, subscribe my channel, and hit the bell icon to stay tuned.